Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We welcome you to our NBC virtual church service on this morning. Thank you so much for joining us and we pray that you will click that share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture this morning will come from 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. And it reads, But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, You must be holy because I am holy. These verses are telling us that God is holy. He is distinct. He is set apart. He is in a class all by himself. Holiness is central to who God is. So this God who created us, who sent his only son to save us, is calling us to be holy just like he is holy. God wants us to be set apart from the world. We are not supposed to look like the world if we have confessed that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior of our lives. So this morning, we come this morning just to worship God, this holy God, and to give him honor, praise, and glory for the many things that he has done in our lives. So come on in and let's worship the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor, give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord, let's give him the your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for keeping us and blessing us. God, we thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance to come before you, Father God, to study your word. We pray that you bless us now, Father God. 
Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your word, that your word will speak clearly to us. And bless us, Father God, that we will glean from your word those things that are fruitful, those things that are edifying in the body, and those things that will glorify God. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, comforting name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. God the praise. Come let us worship the Lord. Let me thank those of you who have joined us again today for our Sunday morning worship service. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of our service. To our businesses, thank you for being a part. We're glad that you've joined us again on this morning. It is another Lord's Day, and God has blessed us one more again to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let me call your attention to Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. In the New Testament, the book is St. Matthew. The chapter is 24. The verses are 1 through 8. <coughs> Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. In the New Testament. Thank you so much for joining us on our Facebook live page as well as on Zoom. Thank you for being a part of our service. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 8 is all we can chew on today, and we will come back next week and give you more. Amen? Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 8 is where we are. When you found it, you will discover these words. Jesus, then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you hear, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. I want to talk about the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. When we look at life, sometimes we oftentimes wonder, will it get better or will it get worse? Even today, as we look at these great United States of America, we wonder, when will it get better or will it get worse? We often wonder that Will in this lifetime, as we see it, does things have to get worse before they get better? When we see the world, the world that we live in today, oftentimes our foreparents promised us that these days will come. They warned us against tribulation. Not the great tribulation, but the tribulations that we will have in our lives. They oftentimes warned us that the things that you're going through now is nothing compared to what you're going to go through. And we look at our children today and we make similar promises. 
We know that God is God. We know that God is yet on the throne. We understand that God is doing great things with us and through us. But we have to always wonder, will it get better or will it get worse? Some prophets will tell you, some of the word, even the word today will tell us that it's going to get worse before it gets better. We was made a promise back in February, March, and April that this pandemic will go like a miracle. It will be 15 people who will die from this plague and all of a sudden, poof, it will be gone. It will be like a miracle and we will have it no more. Here we are months later, just five, six months later. And over 215,000 people in America alone is dead from this dreadful virus. Well, had we looked at it in February, looked at it in January, and if the truth were to be told, it got worse before it got better. We're still at a point where we're trying to cut down the curve to to limit the heel, to beat back on this sickness and this virus, as well as the deaths. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves in a point in our lives where things that we are used to, we realize we don't really have to do it. And we really don't have to have it. Many of us today is saving, we're saving gas because we realize we don't have to be where we thought we had to be all these years. That's right. We are saving on uh, things that we were spending money on and clothing and fuel and friendship and partying mm -hmm. because we realize today, because we've been threatened by this virus, right. that we really don't have to do it. Jobs all over this world have come to the conclusion that people can do work from home and be just as effective, That's right. if not more effective, than going in to an office space. We find ourselves, as we do here in the text, with luxurious buildings that are being limited in their use. When we look at the text, we find such situations. We find the disciples admiring the temple. They are admiring the buildings because this building has just been renovated, just been constructed. Because this temple has just been brought back to life, the disciples de decide to go to Jesus and tell Jesus, look at all this beauty in these buildings. The Bible says, then Jesus went up and departed from the temple. His disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus had a message for them. And I believe that Jesus has a similar message for us this morning. They were admiring the beauty of the temple. They were admiring the great cathedrals. They were admiring the awesomely built buildings. Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? I assure you, I say unto you that one of these days, every stone will be taken down from these buildings. Amen. He says there's not going to be one stone. There will not be one stone that will not be thrown down. There will not be one stone on top of another stone. I stop by to tell you today, my dears, we need to make sure we admire Jesus and not the building. Amen. We have to make sure that we focus on those things that God will have us focused on. Life is going to go on, and many times we can't determine how life happens, but we can determine how we address life. We have to get to a point in our lives where we put first thing first, where we put great things first, where we put priorities on the best things of God. 
see, we, we used to walk in church and someone would walk in there with their canary yellow on and light up the place. Mm -hmm. Someone would walk in there with their bright pink on, especially on Resurrection Sunday, and, and they would get everybody's attention. But now we have people sitting at home with the pajamas on, sitting at home piecewise dressed, sitting at home halfway dressed, watching the broadcast live, and they're saying amen from their living room. We must put in priority those things that God prioritizes. We must put things first that God has put things first. We have to make sure that we align our lives up with God. When we look at the first two verses in Matthew chapter 24, we find that the disciples were concerned about this new building. They were concerned and they were excited about the fact that the building was luxurious. It was Lazarus. It was an awesome building. It was a great building. The buildings around this temple was an awesome building. But Jesus says to them, not one stone would be upon another stone. Let me just share with you, the building is not that important. I'm telling you today, I'm telling you today, as I've said to you many times before, you are no longer a Christian because you go to church, then you are a car because you sit in the garage. We have to understand that showing up at the building is important. We must understand that assembling, assembling ourselves before the Lord is utmost important according to Hebrews chapter 10 Verses 24 and 25. We are together, together. And now that God has provided us these mediums by which we can hear the word of God, we ought to be excited about running to hear the word of God by way of Facebook Live, by way of Zoom, by way of whatever means God has presented to you. We ought to run to hear. You ought not be late for online service. Amen. You ought to be excited about it, just like the disciples were excited about these buildings. We ought to be excited on Sunday morning that we get a chance to hear from God through the man of God. Yes, we ought to get excited about it. We ought to prioritize those things that God has prioritized. Too often we, we put our faith in people. We put our faith in stuff. We put our faith in our possessions. We have to put our faith in God. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to them today, although these buildings are magnificently built, not one stone will be on top of the other. <laughs> one stone, not one stone will be sitting on top of the other stone. There will come a day where you understand that the building won't be as important as the people that's in the building. He moves, he moves to the Mount of Olives. And while he's there, the disciples privately sneaks up to him. You see, oftentimes our disciples are just like the disciples of today. We don't want to be embarrassed in public by asking stupid questions. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they privately asked him to tell them three things, and all three of them are related. First of all, tell us what these things mean, and tell us when these things will come to pass. He says, tell, they, they asked the question, tell us when will these things be? The next question, what will be the sign of your coming? And the final question when will be the end of this age? The, the disciples always wanted a sign. They, they were a group of people that always needed a sign. Let me tell you, when you walk by faith, you don't need a sign. When you walk by faith, you understand, you understand that things around you may look difficult to deal with, but when you walk by faith, you understand that God is able to deal with it because God is at work behind the curtain, behind the scene, behind what we see. That's right. He says, when he gets to the Mount of Olives, they ask the question, God, when will these things take place? When will these things come to be? 
First of all, he asked, they asked him, when were these things, when all this great magnificent buildings, these great magnificent buildings that you, you have allowed to take place, when will it come to pass that no stone will be on top of another stone? We see it all over our world today. Hurricanes come through and boof. Buildings that have been spent, millions of dollars have been spent on it. Gone in seconds. Jesus says to them, one of these days, this is not going to exist anymore. He goes on to tell them that in the midst of all this stuff that's going on, in the midst of the end of the age, in the midst of my coming again, in the midst of these buildings being destroyed, I just want to say to you, don't you be deceived. Yes. Jesus says, don't be deceived because this is the beginning of your troubles. <laughs> This is the beginning of your sorrow. This is the beginning. Let me just share with you today. Saints of God, don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. Just because trouble is going on, don't be deceived. Yes. You run to Jesus in the midst of your trouble. Don't be deceived by what's going on around you. Don't be deceived by a man that says he's done more for Christianity than Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived that, that you don't have to take this virus seriously. Now, I don't know what planet they're on, but, but there's a particular group called Republicans that want you to believe that this virus is going to be gone in the morning. And they act like it's already being gone when family members, neighbors, and friends are dying every day. Dying by the second. They want you to believe that it's coming to a close. Jesus says, this is the beginning of our sorrows. But the good thing about the Christ and the good thing about the church, the good thing about the church of the living God, we don't have to be deceived. You see, the problem is that we as Christians find ourselves believing stuff that other folks say when we won't believe what the word of God says. We're in a moment. We're, we're in a time. We're, we're in a snapshot now of trouble all around us. There's fire on one side. Acres upon thousands of acres have already been burned. Thousands of acres being burned up. Thousands of acres just going down. Thousands of houses being wiped out. Multi-million dollar structures being wiped out by fire. It's bad out here. Then we have earthquakes. Earthquakes showing up in what the Bible says, King James declares in divers places, mm -hmm. in various places, in unfamiliar places, there are earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Then we have storms. The Gulf is seeing one, two, three, four storms after the other. And then there were four storms in the Gulf at one time. Tornadoes, hurricanes, ravishing our country. It is bad out here. It is bad, it is bad, it is bad. But Jesus says, don't you be deceived. He says it because he's already said to us that the devil has a way of changing our mind. The devil has a way of confusing us. The devil has a way of making us think that we are not with Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, don't you be deceived. You know, every day, every year, every month, something new comes out. There's another religion on the scene. Jesus says, don't you be deceived. Yes. Every time we look up, there's a new king and a new kingdom being ushered in. Jesus says, don't you be deceived. Mm -hmm. Every time we look up, there's a new, new, new religion on the horizon. The Bible says, Jesus says, don't you be deceived. Mm -hmm. Men will find themselves lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Men will find themselves heavy and high-minded. Men will find themselves thinking that they are in control, and they will find themselves thinking that they are above God. 
Look at the text. In the text, it says, Matthew chapter 24, says in, in verse number four, don't you be conceived. Let no man deceive you. Take heed that no one deceives you. Verse five, he says, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. There, there, there will be some that will come in the name of Christ and say that I am the Christ. We've seen it before. We are seeing it again. When we have a man that says that he can save you without a silly cross, he's coming in the name of Christ. And we know because we read the book that he's not the Christ. Whenever a man says that I can save you without a silly cross, that's not something that even ought to deceive us. That's not something that we ought to even consider. That's not something we ought to even worry about. We have to make sure that we're not deceived by this new stuff that's popping up. If it's in the book, believe the book. If it's not in the book, don't believe it. For many will come in my name. They will come in the name of Jesus. They will come talking Jesus. They will come talking about their Jesus. They will come talking about what Jesus has already said. And they will twist the doctrine and make you feel good. But don't you be deceived. Amen. That's right. God is not about a feel good religion. God is not about a religion that's a prosperity religion. God is about man having to suffer sometime in order to make sure that he is with the Lord. Yes. Suffering will come. Don't let people deceive you. They will tell you that they even are the Christ. Many will tell you that they are the Christ. Many will tell you, see, I can do these great things. Don't you know the devil has power? Yes. He has power. The devil has might, but the fact of the matter is he doesn't have all power. Amen. The devil has might, but he's not almighty. We have to trust in God and God alone. Amen. He says they will even come in my name. These men will come and say they come in the name of Jesus. Growing up in backwoods of Mississippi, sometimes we had to go to town and we would go to the little Asian store. And, and my mom and my daddy had a, a running tab at the agent store when we, whenever we went in. And sometimes I would walk in and I would tell them that my mom and my daddy sent me to get something and put it on their tab. Most of the time, it was true. Most of the time, when I went to pick up, mom and daddy sent me to get it. But sometimes since I was there, since I was there, and during that time, you could put your hand in the cookie jar, but get out a bag, a handful of cookies, and put it in the bag. They would weigh it and would charge you, and I would say, put it on the tab. <laughs> what Jesus is saying, that some people will come in my name and say that I sent them, but don't you be deceived. If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, it's a duck. You need to understand that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We don't need to be deceived. Don't easy. And some people are so easily deceived. Some people are being deceived today on stuff that really doesn't make sense. I don't want to sit behind the resolute desk with a mask on. Well, first of all, when you think about it, if you're sitting behind the resolute desk and you're the only person in the room, you wouldn't need a mask. <laughs> Secondly, if, 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 you, if you get to a point in your life where, where you're willing to let millions of people die for your own little success or what you call success, let me tell you, don't be deceived. People will do things and God will always show you who they are. You don't have to walk with them. You don't have to trust in them. You don't have to believe in them. Yes, Jesus says, don't be deceived. He says that some people will come in my name and, and they will even tell you that I am the Christ. You know, we beat up on David Koresh, but he's not the only one. Mm -hmm. We beat up on other false prophets that was big time in the news, but there are some local false prophets today. 
that we need to stop believing in. Jesus says that they will even say that I am the Christ. You see, in the Jewish connotation during that day, they were waiting on the Messiah. Jesus says, take heed. There will be some that will come in my name and they will even say, I am the Christ. They will lie to you. They will deliver a message to you to even make you think they're the Christ. Yes. They will do some things that you will say, ooh, we, nobody can do that but Christ. Jesus says, don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. They will come in the name of the Lord. There are many who are preaching and teaching. There are many who are walking and performing great feats. And they are saying that they came in the name of the Lord. But if it doesn't line up with the book, they are not coming in the name of the Lord. Amen. It just bothers me to see people flock to coliseums, give up a lot of money just to hear somebody tell them a lie. You got to make sure it lines up in the word. Men and women have made millions upon millions of dollars because they've sold you a cloth. They've sold you a handkerchief. They've sold you, they've sold, they've sold you a towel. And you've taken your very last to, to buy that towel. Mm -hmm. You can buy handkerchiefs all day long. You don't have to spend your money on somebody who has lied to you and said that I am the Christ. Right. I tell you the truth. If you get my handkerchief today, you get a little slob on it. You get a little sweat on it. And every now and then you get a little mucus on it. If you buy it, you won't get anything but just that. The blessings come from the Lord, and God chooses to use man any way he wants to use man. Some will come and say, I am the Christ. He says, don't you be deceived. Amen. Verse number five, he says to us, Matthew 24, verse number five, he says, and these men will, will deceive many. These men will receive a whole lot of people. They will deceive a whole lot of people. There will be people flocking. I, I watch the news and I see people flocking behind a man that means him no good. And for some races, for some, some, some particular group, I don't see how you can flock behind a man who spews hate at you. It's not, it's not hard. It's easy to recognize that he's deceiving you. Amen. He says, you will deceive many. Many people all over the world will deceive many. And let me just say to you, those of you who are flocking behind those who are not of God, don't you think for a minute that what they do to others, they won't do to you. Just because it's not your boy, just because it's not your girl, just because it's not you that's being victimized now, just keep waking up in the morning. Sooner or later, what they do to them, they will also do to you. Yes. Don't be deceived. Many have been deceived. Jesus says, as we march toward this great tribulation period, as we move through this pain and this agony, as we move from day to day, Jesus says, in verse number six of Matthew 24, Jesus says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. He says, in the 21st century, he says, in, in August, he says, in June, he says, in September, he, he says, in October of 2021, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Let me just say to you today, the great United States is in the middle right now of a great civil war. We, we don't have to wait till the guns are fired. We are already in the midst of a great civil war. And in a civil war, it simply means that one nation has turned on herself. And in this civil war, no one can win. 
In the Civil War, nobody wins. It doesn't matter how, if you have more casualties than I have. No one can win in a Civil War. The great United States of America, the great superpower, is in a great Civil War today. And no one is winning. No one is winning. There's no love there. There's no affection there. There's no sensitivity there. Nobody is winning. We're going down the tube. We're being drained every day. No one is winning. There are wars and rumors of wars. Not only are we at war, not only are we in a great civil war today, but rumors of wars are already out there. You, you hear me, don't you? You hear me? And you hear it every day. If, if this candidate wins, he is not going to leave the office. Because if I don't win, I'm going to contest it, and I want my people who have war shoes on, who have war weapons, to stand by and get ready. Not only are we in the midst of a war, I'm just talking about the United States as a whole, just the United States, of, not to mention the whole world. The United States of America is in a great civil war. And then we have a general that's urging this great war on because he has pitted one group over the other. And he has made sure that this war keeps going on. Every time the war died down, every time the talk dies down, he says something stupid to rise it up one more time. The wars and movements of wars. We're living this thing out in the last days. We're living it out right now. That's why you got to get to know Jesus. We're living out wars and rumors. The, the rumor is, come November 3rd, 2021, come November 3rd, 2021, you all better be at the house because we are standing by and we're standing ready. Let me just share to you today, you need to go out and vote. God need to make sure, you need to make sure that you let God handle the rest, but you need to go out and vote, and you need to, you need to vote the right way. Yes. You need to make sure you vote the right way. Don't compromise because you are not being affected directly. And when you think you're not being affected directly, you already been hoodwinked. You already been shut down. And don't let $1,200 take your vote. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. The Bible says many have been deceived, many have been, been fooled. Don't let $1,200 fool you, especially when it comes from somebody that, that's claiming that it came from and didn't really come from. Wars and rumors of wars. He says, but see that you're not troubled. Don't get excited about this. The Bible is real. The Bible has already... Confirm what the internet says. Whatever you read in the newspaper, whatever you read in the almanac, whatever you read on the websites, you need to understand the Bible has already put it forth. Yes. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised on what happens today because I've already read the book. <laughs> not only have I read the book, I've read the end of the book. And the end of the book says, don't be troubled and don't get excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. God has a way. God has a way of bringing man to his knees. And let me tell you, let me just share with you today, as your pastor, I have to tell you to pray for the leaders of this church. I have to tell you to pray for the leaders of this country. I have to tell you to pray for the leaders of this world. But my confession today is, this past month has been very hard for me to pray for the leader of this nation. We need to understand that we all are human. We, we need to understand that we all are being, being affected one way or the other. We need to understand that this world is affecting us. While we sit in our houses, while we're segregated, while we don't have fellowship, I know we're all being affected. I know you're ready to get back to worship. I know you're ready to get back to church. Now, let me just share with you. Whenever the doors are open, don't give me an excuse that you got something else to do. Whenever the doors of the church is open, those who usually don't 
come need to show up. Whenever the doors of the church open, those who show up regularly need to show up. And whenever the doors of the church are open, those who usually show up after time need to show up on time. <laughs> We're in a great warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. It is a warfare like none other. We need to understand that God is in control. Don't be troubled because God is in control. Jesus says that the world offers you tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have defeated the world. I have the victory over the world. He said, don't you be troubled. But these things must come to pass. These things got to come to pass. These things must come to pass. These things have to come to pass. You see, it's already written. We're going to have wars. We're going to have earthquakes. These things have to come to pass, but the end is not yet. 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 Regardless of how bad it gets, the end is not yet. <laughs> Nations will rise against nation. Kingdom will rise against kingdom, but the end is not yet. He says to us today, we have tribulation, we have trouble, but don't you be troubled. I say to you again, sometimes God calms the storm, but other times God calms the child in the storm. Sometimes God will stand up and God will say, peace be still. And the winds and the waves shut down. Sleep like a baby. But other times, the winds and the waves keep right on blowing in my life. Your soul need to be anchored in the Lord. Amen. Your soul, your soul need to be anchored. When your soul is anchored in the Lord, Jesus says, don't you be troubled. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> don't be troubled because the end is not yet. What God is saying when he says the end is not yet, he's given us another chance. He's given us another opportunity. The end is not yet. And because the end is not yet, he's given us another opportunity to get it right with him. I thank God that the end is not yet. I thank God that he's given me another opportunity. I thank God that he's given me another chance. I thank God that even if, if I'm not doing the sin that you consider sin, I thank God God has given me another chance. Has he given you another chance? Amen. Has he given you another chance? God has given me another chance. The end is not yet. He has given me one more chance. Let me just say to you today, God is giving you another chance. And because he's giving you another chance, you need to take God at his word. You tried him. You tried her. You tried them. And you tried it. You need to try God. God has given us another chance. He says the end is not yet. Verse 7, he says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famine, there will be pestilence, there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be earthquakes all over the world. There will be earthquakes all over the United States of America. There will be earthquakes. There will be pestilence. There will be famine. We see people now driving in line, standing in line for food like never before. We haven't seen these long lines since the Great Depressions. I know we see them during hurricanes, earthquakes. I know we see them, but not at this level. We see famine, and it's been going on almost a whole year. We see men in line every day, women in line trying to feed their children every day. Every single day, there's famine in the land. The great superpower, the great United States of America that has plenty of money, still got people in long lines for food. Yes. Jesus said, don't you be troubled. <laughs> Jesus says, don't you be flinching. Don't you lose hope because there's earthquake in various places. Don't you leave, lose hope because kingdom has turned against kingdom. Nation has turned against nation. Yes. Just this week, a woman said, I don't, I don't recognize, recognize my nation. I don't recognize these great United States of America. She says, I don't recognize it because now we have a leader who has caused enmity against our allies. 
He has caused fights with our allies, those who supported us, those who walked with us, those who've been with us for many, many years. Now we're at odds against them. And those who've been our enemy for years, he's shaking hands and hugging them. Jesus says, don't you be troubled. Yes. Jesus says, you hang in there. Jesus says, Jesus says, you walk with the Lord. I remember this time last year, I promised Sister Davis that we were going to go to Acapulco, Mexico. I promised that we were going to have a good time. And right as we were set to leave, the president of the United States of America started a war with the president of Mexico. A word war, a word war. A war of words, a, a war of going back and forth. And we concluded that day, it's just not safe right now to be an American in Mexico. I, I believe I believe the Lord spoke very clearly to me that we can take the vacation later. And then if we don't take the vacation later, we can find some nice spots right here in America. It's because we've gotten to a point in our lives where leadership is not aligned with our friends anymore, but now we are aligned with our enemies. Jesus says to you today, kingdoms will be against kingdom. Nations will be against nation. Kings will be against kings. But don't you be troubled. I don't, I don't want to pour sorrow on you today. But the final verse, verse number eight, Matthew chapter 24, verse number eight says, all these things are the beginning of sorrow. This, is, this stuff has just begun. This stuff is, and you see, if Biden and Harris take on the ticket, they take on some sorrows. If Trump and Pence stays in office, they're going to produce more sorrow. We need to understand, we need to understand, we have to play our role, and as we play our role, we let God handle the rest. Because the Bible says, Jesus says, don't you be troubled. Yes. He says, don't you be troubled, don't you be troubled, don't you be all wiped out, don't you be all confused, don't you be psychotic, don't you lose hope. Trust in God and God will bless you. I trust in God. Mm -hmm. Whatever may be. This is the beginning of sorrows, but I trust in God. And we'll find out in a few more weeks, we'll find out that, that even though this is the beginning of sorrow, God offers us hope. Yes. Even though sorrows have already begun, even though coronavirus is taking family members, friends, and neighbors out, don't you be sorrowful because God has a way of blessing you. Amen. God has a way of a blessing us. God has a way of strengthening us. God has a way of keeping us. We have to play our role. We have to play our role well. We have to vote. We have to play our role well. We have to mask up. We have to play our roles well. We have to avoid large crowds. We, we have to play our roles well. We have to hang out with the people in our houses. We have to play our roles well because this virus is real. And if the devil has a way of taking you out, he will do it even with a virus. But we need to understand in the midst of all that's going on, we still have hope. We have to have hope in the midst of the sorrow. We have to trust God in the midst of the sorrow. The psalmist says that God is the strength of my life. God is my fortress. God is my very help in time of trouble. We got to trust in God. Wherever we may be, we have to trust in God. Even though this is the beginning of sorrow, even though there are birth pains, we need to understand that God is still in control. And as God is in control, he's constantly blessing us who hold near and dear to him. I say to you today, yes, this is the beginning of sorrows. But Jesus says, be of good faith. Be of good cheer. He's already overcome the world. He did it over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ took a tree, I tell you, and he paid the price for you and me. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ died on a skull hill called Calvary. 
Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ fought for us and he died for us on Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, he hung between two thieves. Over 2,000 years ago, he prepared the way for us to have hope. Our hope ought to be in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I won't trust on any other thing other than Jesus and hold on to his name. I trust in God. Wherever I may be, I trust in him. It looked like a dark and dismal day for Jesus Christ because he hung between two thieves. It became midnight and midday. It got black dark that day. The earth reeled and rocked like a drunken man. We, we have to understand and look dim for Jesus and it looked dim for us. But they took him off the cross. Yes. He had already told them, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. They messed up and lifted him up. Mm. He died on that cross. Yes, he did. They took him off the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb. Because he gave that tomb back to Joseph. He got up early that third day morning. He rose from the dead. He rose with all power. I told you the devil has power. But Jesus has all power. He got up with all power. And heaven and earth in his hand. He rose from the dead. With all power. And heaven and earth in his hand. He did it for you. And he did it for me. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. You need him in these sorrows. <laughs> this is the beginning of sorrows. But the good news is, Jesus is available in the midst of your sorrows. If you don't know him, you need to get to know him. You need to get to know Jesus the son of God, the righteous one, the one who has given his life for you and for me. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know him right here, right now. If you've never received Jesus as your savior, trust him today. Trust Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your savior. He says to you that regardless of what's going on, you don't be troubled. Trust me. If you trust him, you can make it. If you trust Jesus, he can make things right for you. Trust him. If you never received Christ, I'd like you to bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for your sins and rose from the dead. Will you come to him today? Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you're born again. If you prayed this prayer trusting the story of Jesus Christ, we believe that you're now born again. We believe that you are on your way to heaven when you die. But if you're saved, and for some reason or the other, you are out of fellowship with God. I invite you to get to know him as your Lord. You know him as your Savior. For you are saved. You're on your way to heaven. But I invite you to get to know him as your Lord. I say to you today, repent of your sins. Recommit to him. Reconnect to him. Rededicate your life to him. And if you want to rededicate or you want a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention, where Jesus is the main attraction. 
where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where he has all power. And I believe that Jesus would love to see you as a part of this body. Inbox me and let me know, first of all, you received Christ as your Savior. I want to rejoice with you, fellowship with you. And I want the church to rejoice with you. Also, if, if you are rededicating your life or you want a church home in New Beginning Church, inbox me and let me know it. And we will celebrate you. And we'll be glad that you come to the church. We've had four people join. We've had four people join, hallelujah, by way of online church. We, we have four people who have joined. We want to thank them and welcome them to the New Beginning Church. We have four people who have joined since we've been out by way of online church, and we want to thank God for them. We want to thank God. We want to thank God for Sister Judith Howard for joining the New Beginning Church. Amen. We want to thank God for Sister Symphony for joining New Beginning Church, her granddaughter. We want to thank God for Robert Funberger and his wife, Betty Funberger, for joining the New Beginning Church. Now this is your moment. You can get to know him. You can get to join the New Beginning Church. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for being a part of our church service. Thank you for, for being with us. It is now offering time. It is time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time for us to give to the Lord. God has blessed us financially, and we want to give back to the Lord, and the Lord has a way of blessing us. We, we, return, we return our tithes to the Lord. We don't pay our tithes. We return... We return to the Lord what the Lord has, has given us. We don't pay him. We can't pay God. But we return 10% or more back to the Lord. For the Lord has been a good God. He has, he has blessed us in so many ways. So we return our tithes and offering back to the Lord. We return it to him. And you can do that in three ways. You can do that. You can give tithes, offering, and your sacrificial gifts to the Lord in three, in three ways. You can give by way of cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls, uh, cash tag NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. Or if you want to mail in your love offering or your, your tithes and offering, you can do so by mailing it to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. You can mail it by Send it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to follow us on Facebook Live as well as Zoom at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school service. 9 a.m. every Sunday for our Sunday school service. Uh, 1045, this service that you've just attended, and we thank you for attending. 1045 service every Sunday and also on Wednesday nights at 7 20, 7 20 p.m. Continue to, to be a part of our service at 7 20 p.m. every single Wednesday night. So whatever you do, continue to be a part of our service. We're glad that you've joined today and to our visitors, thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being with us on today. And thank you for worshiping with us and giving to us, giving to the Lord with us. Thank you so much. Just a few announcements. In the state of Texas, we begin tomorrow our early voting. This is a good time to vote. Vote early. 
and get it over with. I'm sorry, not tomorrow, but Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, October the 13th, we began early voting on Tuesday. Please, ma'am, please, sir, everybody over 18 ought to be voting in this election. This is a vote for the soul of the nation. We need to make sure uh, we continue to carry out our rights to vote. Secondly, I'm asking you to pray. Continue to lift up the Lord. Continue to ask the Lord for leadership, guidance, and instruction. Continue to walk with the Lord. Continue to be a blessing uh, through prayer and continue to pray for others other than yourself. Pray for others in the Lord. Our prayer meeting is scheduled for this Tuesday night. Our prayer meeting this Tuesday night, second Tuesday. Uh, this Tuesday is by uh, conference call. Our prayer meeting is by conference call. And let me put that, uh, uh, is it, I don't know. Uh, give me an inbox me and I will give you the conference call number. I'm not sure if the conference call number is, is on the flyer. I don't think it is. The conference call number is not on the flight. So whatever you do, inbox me and let me know that you want to attend our conference call for prayer. We are having prayer. If you're visiting with us, please come and join us in prayer on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Tuesday night at, at 7 p.m. Also, I'm asking all our youth and our young people, as well as our adults, if you have any accomplishments this year, uh, we want to highlight those accomplishments. Uh, next Sunday, doing this same service, we want to highlight your accomplishments. And uh, we want you to get those accomplishments to Sister Davis. Uh, let her know what, what you have accomplished. And then if you need prayer, if you need prayer, we want to put you also on the prayer list. So next Sunday, third Sunday, we will highlight our youth and our young people and all the things that they have accomplished uh, this year. Amen. I know school is tough. But don't be troubled. <laughs> Make sure that you trust Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. I want to thank you so much for joining us here on our Facebook Live as well as our Zoom account. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. We thank God for, for blessing us on today. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to pray. Continue to, to focus on voting. Let's get out there and vote. And I'll see you Tuesday or hear you Tuesday, rather, in our conference call for prayer. We are calling for prayer. And fourth Tuesday, we will be having our prayer meeting by way of Zoom. So please, ma'am, please, sir, join us. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church. We're strengthening the families, supporting the school, and impacting the world through Jesus the Christ. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Let's go for the Lord. Father God, we thank you now for Jesus the Christ. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. We thank you for helping us to prioritize our lives. Bless us, Father God, to focus more on Christ than on the building. Bless us, Father God, as we realize that this is the beginning of sorrows. We should not be troubled. We should not fear. Bless us to be not deceived. Bless us, Father God, to be able to see through deceptions, even religious deceptions. Bless us, Lord God, that we will understand who Christ is and honor no other man other than Jesus Christ. Bless us as we see and we take part in these wars and rumors of wars that you will keep us. We believe that you are our refuge. You are our strong tower. And we believe that you will hide us in your provision. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join each other by saying, Amen, Amen, and Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church.